Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Christian house of praise is live. Glory to God. We are live. Hallelujah. How is everybody doing out there? Amen. Are y'all ready for the word tonight? Are you ready for the word tonight? This is TNT, Tuesday Night Teaching. Are we ready for the word? How you doing, Mother Cobb? God bless you. How you doing? Who is that? Naja, amen, the Eckridge family. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready for the word tonight? Amen. Brother Cox, amen. Sister Tab, glory to God. Amen. I'm ready for the word tonight. Oh, yeah, Sister Chrome, y'all come on in the house. Are we ready for the word tonight? Glory to God. We are live. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise him. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. We are ready. <laughs> Glory to God. I am so glad, so happy, so godly proud to be able to come to you even in this way. Amen. Glory to God. I can't wait to get back to church. I can't wait to be back in the sanctuary. Now, I love the house. Amen. I know God's word can come forth anywhere, but it's something about being in the house of God. Amen. So I'm ready to get back into the house. I know many of you are as well, but I thank God that his word can go forth in any venue, in any avenue, no matter where we are. If we're able to receive, if we're if we're, if our ground is fertile, if we're if we're ripe, we can receive the word. And we've been teaching this series. Y'all been with us. For those of you that have been with us, we're in our faith lessons and we're coming from the measure of faith, coming from Romans, the 12th chapter, the third verse. You know what it says by now. God said, I dealt every man and woman the measure of faith. Amen. How many of you are walking, living, talking in your measure tonight? Huh? How many of you are in your measure of faith tonight? Glory to God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working my measure. Amen. I'm working my measure. Glory to God. I thank God for today. Today is November the 3rd. Hallelujah. Election day. Glory to God. Election day. I'm praying for those of you that are out there that may even be having some anxiety because it's election day and not knowing what the outcome is going to be and not knowing who's going to be the president and, and who's going to sit in the White House. But I want you to know tonight, I want you to know today, the results are already in. Hallelujah. God is king. Glory to God. He still sits on the throne. He still reigns supreme. I don't care what happens happens in man's election. I want you to know we can't place God. He's already king of kings. He's already Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And I thank God that he is. Amen. I thank God that I know who sits on the throne. <laughs> Tomorrow, the next day, next year, the next four years from now, I know he'll still be king. He'll still be Lord and he'll still reign supreme. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Today being November the 3rd, I also got to spend a little short time with my mom. Today is her 81st birthday. Glory to God. Yeah, that's a good place to praise him at right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today is her 81st birthday and I got to spend a little time with her and to enjoy her company today. And I thank God for allowing her to see another birthday. And I thank God not only for allowing her to see another birthday, she even was out 81 years old exercising her right to vote. Amen. So I thank God for that. And I pray that each and every one of you that are of age and are able that you exercise your right today. I, I pray that, or you did it earlier, that you voted, amen, that you went out and made your voice heard. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. My vote, my vote is my voice, but my ballot is my business. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. My ballot is my business. And, you know, no matter who we vote for, nobody trying to tell you who you vote for. This is, this is in the world. We're going through, we're, we have to deal with this world. And that's the reason why faith is so important. We have to deal with this world. Doesn't matter who's who's the elected official. It don't matter who the boss is on your job. You got to go in them tomorrow and do your job. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't have a job. That's why you really need some faith because even if you don't have one, you need faith to get one. Glory to God. And then when you get one, you need faith to keep it. Amen. Glory to God. We're talking about faith tonight. One more one more little note before we jump into the word of God tonight. Uh, November the 10th, a week from today, 
is our Feed America food distribution. You know how we do it. Every uh, month we do a Feed America feed, uh, food distribution. The, our location has changed for this month, but we invite all of you to come out. If you're in this local area, please come out. Please join us. We need volunteers. We, we always in need of volunteers. We pray that you, if you're in this area or you know somebody in this area that's in need of food, please send them out. We haven't started working on our Thanksgiving food distribution, turkeys and all those things, but we have a monthly food, feed, uh, food distribution uh, with Feed America, and it's going to be Tuesday, November the 10th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. We cut it off at 12, y'all. We It's a done deal at 12, and our new location is Divine Creation Ministry uh, Church. It's at 1215 Pembroke uh, Road in Oak Grove, Kentucky. 1215 Pembroke Road in Oak Grove, Kentucky. We start at 9, we end at 12. If you know anybody that would like to volunteer, please have them contact the ministry or have them show up at that location uh, from 7 a.m. to 8 uh, a.m. as we sit up and get everything uh, situated for that. That's going to be on the 10th of November. That'll be our next uh, Feed America food distribution. Please, if you know anybody that's in this area, in need, please send them out. God has a blessing for them. Amen. Glory to God. So do that. Please do that. Please come out. And if you want to support, please contact the ministry. Come out. We would love to have you. Amen. Love to have your support. Are y'all ready for the word? I'm ready for this word, y'all. I'm telling you, I've been, I've been waiting and waiting. I know that God has a word for us tonight. If you've been keeping up with us as we've been going through this series, man, this series is good. I want you to know this series is good. But tonight, anybody know what, what uh, last week's series was? Lady Whitley, by the way, is not with me tonight. I'm going solo, as you all can see. I'm going solo tonight. Uh, but do you know what last week's lesson was? If somebody could uh, type in uh, what last week's lesson is, was, amen, let us know that you was with us. Glory to God. The title, just the title, uh, the scriptures, if you know them, uh, why? Because this is Bible study. We should be learning something. I told you every time we come, we should have a pen. We should definitely have our B-I-B-L-E. And we definitely should have some paper. We should be taking some notes. Somebody should go back, uh, watch the tape again. Why? Not, not so that you can see me. No, no. no I'm going to show you tonight. It's only what you hear that's going to help you. <laughs> Glory to God. No, you ain't got to see me. No, we're going to talk tonight about where faith lives. And you need to be able to hear this word. Go back, get the tape, listen to it again. So you will know what the word of God says. We need, we need the word to live by. Glory. Ooh, this is good. This is going to be good tonight, y'all. This is going to be good. We're talking tonight from the title. We're going to stay in the book of Romans tonight. I'll, I'll probably jump around a little bit, but we're going to stay mainly in the book of Romans. And you should see, I don't know if you can see it on your end, you should see the scriptures on the screen. If not, it's Romans, the 10th chapter verse 17. You see it? Do you see it there? Do you have your Bibles out? I got mine. Ooh, glory to God. This is what Romans 10, 17 says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, again, too. And I want to thank all of you for your, for your liberality and giving. I want to thank everybody that, that has been sending notes and cards and, and keeping us encouraged during this pandemic, during this time, during, um, during this, uh, this famine that's in the land, we've been getting a lot of calls, a lot of texts, a lot of emails, a, a lot of uh, a lot of correspondence, just keeping us encouraged. And I want to thank each and every one of you for your liberality and giving. Uh, you can go online now. Those of you that know our website, please go online. If you want to join this ministry, it does not matter where you are. What does matter to us, though, if you don't have a ministry, we would love to have you as a part of this ministry. No matter where you are in the world, you can go to our website. You can fill out the membership card and you, be, you can become a covenant partner with us in this ministry. We would love to have you. One of the things, if you don't have a ministry, it's good that you get connected to a ministry. What's, why is that important, Pastor? Can I just be saved and be at home? Can I just be saved and do it alone? No, the Bible says, forsake not the assembly of yourself with like believers. And what happens when you get together with like believers? What happens and what should happen is your faith is built up. How is my faith built up? Your faith is built up through the word of God. 
through the teaching of the word of God. So therefore, that's why we would like to have you as members. If you don't have a church already, we would love to have you. Go to our website. You can sign up and become one of our covenant connected partners around the world. And we will be in covenant connection with you. And we will be praying for you. Amen. Glory to God. Where did I tell you to go? Where are we at? Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 17. When you get there, the Bible says this, and I'm reading the New King, Je New King James Version. It reads a little bit different than yours, but it says this. So then, <laughs> faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we get ready to go into your word tonight, Father, I pray now, Father, that you would lift the tolls of the day, Father God. We pray now, Father, that you would arrest our attention, even now, Father, corner our conscience now, Father, that we may receive from your holy word today what it is that you have for your people. Amen. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. And the people of God said, amen and amen. Right where you are, in your home, whatever, wherever you're at, tell somebody there. Tell them right now. Look them right in the eye and tell them it's all about him. Go ahead. Let them know it. It's all about him. Yes, yes. I thought this Bible, I had to find out that this Bible is a hymn book. <laughs> Glory to God. This is a hymn book. The whole book is about him. I thought it was about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all these different characters, Abraham, Isaac. But I've come to find out that the whole book, the entire book is about him. Glory to God. The book is about him. It's a hymn book. Our lives are all about him. Why is my life all about him? He created us. <laughs> Good God Almighty. He created us. He made us, y'all. And the Bible said he made us in his image and in his likeness. Glory to God. And he gave us this word to live thereby. Now, tonight we're talking about where faith lives. Now, I wasn't looking. I, can't, I couldn't see. Did somebody type in what last week's lesson was? Did some, do somebody know the title? I want to see some of our Bible scholars out there. Yeah, I want to know that this teaching is it's not for naught. Are we getting it or, or are we keeping up? Do we know where we at? Do we know what he taught about last week? Do we know where he's going today? See, the Bible just told us here in Romans, the 10th chapter, 17th verse, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you hear this word, you can't get faith if you can't get faith just by hearing it. You got to hear it by the word of God. And it's not so much that you hear it, but do you retain it? That's why I asked, do anybody know what last week's lesson was? Ah! Is anybody retaining anything? Did I write down what he talked about last week? At least write down the title. Tonight's title is Where Faith Lives. And we're coming from Romans 10, 17. But do anybody know where me and Lady Whitley came from last week was an awesome lesson. It was an awesome lesson. Glory to God. Oh, somebody. Oh, Lady Whitley giving y'all a hand. The fruit of faith. Glory to God. The fruit of faith. Yeah. Now we know she know. <laughs> that ain't. I hope that helped somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. But last week's lesson was an awesome lesson. Why, why are you asking us what you taught last week? Because we're, we're building upon our faith. We're building upon our faith. If you, didn't, if you didn't get last week's lesson, the fruit of faith, to understand what kind of faith, what kind of fruit we should have according to the word and as it pertains to our faith, then you won't really understand tonight's lesson because last week's lesson led into this week's lesson. Mm -hmm. See, because now that I got the fruit, I need to know where does faith live? Good God Almighty, where does faith live? <laughs> You know, if you're going to be in relationship with somebody, you at least got to know where they live at. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Oh, yeah. Can you please, some of you that are out there right now, turn yourself away from that television. Turn yourself away from those sites that's giving you the election results. I, I can tell you right now, you, you'll be up all night. You'll find out about that later. But what I want you to get now, look at me, look at me, is this word of God. Is this word of God. See, those election results, we can't live on them. Oh, glory to God. But the Bible said we got to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Glory to God. That's what we got to live on. So I want you to get this word tonight. I want you to get where faith lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, I know by the lesson last week, I need to have some kind of fruit on my tree. I need to have the fruit of faith, if you will. I need to have the fruit of faith. But how do I get faith when I don't know where faith is? Wait a minute, Pastor. What are you saying? Faith has a residence. 
<laughs> Glory. You mean faith has a dwelling place? You mean faith has an address? Oh, glory to God. Yeah, if you're going to be in relationship with somebody, you at least need to know where they live at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, my, somebody might be saying, well, I ain't going to worry about where you live at. I'll catch faith out in the street. I'll catch faith on the corner. I'll catch, I'll catch faith as I go through life. Well, I want you to understand, faith don't work like that. And faith's father don't play that. <laughs> Faith father don't play that. No, 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 no. You won't catch faith out in the street. You won't catch faith on the corner because faith don't work like that. And nor does her father play that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, you might be saying, well, no problem. No problem. I'll just call her. But I want you to understand you can't just call faith. Yeah, what's her number? I'll just call her. No, you can't call faith because if you heard the scripture, the Bible says faith comes. Hello, somebody. Faith comes by hearing. So therefore, you can't call faith. What you got to do is K-Y-M-S. You got to shut up, be quiet, keep your mouth closed, and hear faith. Oh, oh, we getting good. Oh, I know it is. I feel my afro coming back. Yeah, yeah, you don't call faith. Hello, somebody. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Therefore, that's the reason why I asked you, do you know what last week's lesson was? Because if you didn't hear it last week, if you didn't retain it last week, oh, my God. You won't hear faith when faith is calling you. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Where does faith live? Where does faith reside? Uh, I told you, you can't call faith. Faith got to call you. And the only way faith can call you, you got to have an ear to hear faith. <laughs> the Bible says here, Romans 10, 17. So then, mm, faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God. Now, I thought it was through my ears that I hear. No, no, no. You ever heard something with your heart? Ooh, glory. You ever heard something with your heart? See, that's how faith works. We got a KYMS. Keep our mouth shut to hear faith call. Yeah, yeah, you won't find faith in the street. You can't find faith on the corner. You won't find faith around the way. No, if you're going to come into a relationship with faith, uh -huh, you can't call faith. What you got to do, you got to be quiet and hear faith. The Bible says faith comes, but she comes by hearing. Mm. Too many of us are talking. Too many of us are dialoguing when we should be hearing. And the Bible says it twice. And hearing. Uh -huh. See, that first hearing is a physical hearing. Many of you can hear me right now. This is Bible study. Do you have your Bible out? Yeah. Many of you can hear me now. But if you can't hear him. Oh, my God. Mm, I heard you, Pastor. But can you hear God? Well, what good are you, Pastor? If I, I got to listen to God. There's two hearings in there. Did you see it? Good God Almighty. Come on, let, let's get into this thing. Right here in Romans, the 10th chapter, I want you to bag up a little bit because we're, we're dealing with this election right now. And we're dealing with people wondering who's going to be elected. I voted. I didn't vote. I should have voted. I could have, would have, should have. I want you to understand that right here in Romans, the 10th chapter, go to verse 12, if you would. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, I know it's good. We're talking about where faith lives. You want to locate faith, you got to know where she lives. I didn't even know faith had an address. I didn't even know faith had a residence. I didn't even know faith resided, had a dwelling place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. See, too many times what we're doing in life, we're trying to get somebody to do something. We're, getting, we're trying to get somebody to give something when they don't even live there. I don't want to lose you here. Yeah. You ever heard somebody said, uh, say, uh, give in faith? Mm -hmm. or give from abundance, because sometimes we use those terms in church. Well, let me help you. Before somebody can give in abundance, you know what abundance is, right? Give out of your abundance, because the Bible says don't give out of necessity, give out of your abundance. Scripture, just let's stay in the book. Well, how can I give out of my abundance when I don't live in abundance? Ooh. Ooh. How can I give in faith when I don't even live by uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. 
See, sometimes we're trying to get somebody to do something when, when we should be teaching them first how to live. See, you can't give there if you don't live there. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. You can't give there if you don't live there. You can't, you can't live by faith if you never live in faith. Oh, man. This is not a play on words. This ain't an up or down, in or out. No. The Bible says, and the just shall live by faith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what we got to learn. See, you can give in faith. You, you, can, you can live in faith if you first learn how to first reside there. Oh, oh my God. Uh, we, we talked about the fruit of faith. This is the reason why I asked you, did you remember what last week's lesson was? We talked about the fruit of faith. But one of the things about the fruit of faith is you can't have this type of fruit on your tree if you don't live in that neighborhood. Mm. Mm. What kind of fruit are we talking about? You remember last week we talked about, and he said, add uh, uh, Sunday, I told you, you got to add to your faith. Ah, ain't faith enough? Faith is not enough. Salvation is enough to get you to heaven, but you're going to go through hell trying to get there. Oh, glory to God. So you got to add to your faith. Your tree should have certain kind of fruit on it if you are associated with the Father. He said, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples. By what? By your love. Got any love on your tree? Ooh. Do you live in love? Mm. So sometimes we're trying to get people to give something, to do something, but first they got to live there. Oh, okay. You can't give there if you don't live there. Come on, somebody. So let's look here at Romans, the 10th chapter, the 12th verse. Look what it says. I'm reading the New King James Version. It says there's no distinction, meaning there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord is over all and is rich to all that call upon him. Do you see this? Am I in your Bible? Glory to God. Yeah, so, so for all of us that has got anxiety, worried about the election, who's going to win, who's not going to win, who's going to be in the house, who's not going to be in the house, he said there is no difference. There is no distinction. It's the same God. Lady Willie a couple weeks ago gave you those sayings, and we're going to teach on that. That's another lesson. But those sayings, there's only one God, one Lord, ooh, one spirit, one faith. Oh, come on, somebody. One God over all, in all, through all. Or he said, I'm not God at all. Now, while we're worried about who's going to be in, who's going to be out, the Bible tells us here there's no distinction between the Jew, the Greek, between the Republican, nor the Democrat, the black, the white, the libertarian. Come on, somebody. Come on. There's no difference when it comes to God and when it comes to faith. Mm. Mm. For those who call upon him. Woo! You see it? Do you see what I'm talking about? Am I in your Bible? Do you see this word? So tonight when we're talking about where does faith live? Where does faith reside? And how do I get to where faith is? <laughs> how do I change my location and move closer or into the same neighborhood as faith. How do I get to where faith is? Because you're telling me tonight, Pastor, that faith resides somewhere. Faith has a residence. Faith has a location. Oh, my God. Ah, glory to God. How do I get to where faith is? Yeah, see, the, see what we've messed up. We've telling people, live in faith, brother. Uh, 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 give in faith, sister. But first, what we got to do is show brother and sister where faith is. And leave, leave church talking about, now he told me to live in faith and, and I'm trying to live by faith and, and I don't even know where faith is. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Yeah, so we first need to live there if we're going to give there. In order to know where faith resides, we must live by faith. You've seen it, Romans, the first chapter of Romans, the 17th verse says, the just the just, the, the righteous, them that right here that I just read to you in Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 12. It says, there's no distinction between Jew nor Greek. Uh, the same Lord is over all and is rich unto all of them that call upon him. All those that call upon him, they are the ones that Romans 1 and 17. Go there. It's in your Bible. Go ahead. This is Bible study. You got time. Just turn the page. We're in Romans 10. Go back to Romans 1, 17. Right there in your Bible. And it simply says that 
excuse me, the just shall live by faith. Well, who are the just that it's talking about? It's talking about those that there's no distinction between. Those that call upon his name. Oh my God. Those, there is no distinction. He says he is rich towards all of them. Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, uh, 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 Pentecostal. It does not matter your denomination, as long as you have the revelation of who God is and call upon his name. You see it? Do you see it? And call upon him. He says no difference in y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all all the same. Now, the only difference there is in us is those that call upon him and those that don't. Mm. But we all got the right. We all have the ability to call upon him. Oh, you know, I gave you the scripture even on Sunday, you know, just like when the master called his servants to him and he gave each one of them talents. You know, the, you know, the story. He gave one five. He gave one two and he gave another one one. I don't know how much faith he's dealt you. The Bible says in Romans 12 and three that he dealt every one of us the measure. Let's go to Romans 12. It's just right around the corner. Romans 12 and three. It says Paul is talking here. He says, for I say through the grace given unto me. To everyone who is among you, everyone that's among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to. But the Bible says here, think soberly as God has dealt every, every, each and every one, the measure of faith. He dealt all of us the measure of faith. Now I want to go down just a little bit further here and read verse four for you. It says, for as we have many members in one body, mm hmm but all the members do not have the same function or office. That's the reason why when I told you the story in Matthew, the 24th chapter about the talents, well, why did one get five and why did one get two and why did one get one? God says, look, there are many members in the body. Everybody don't get the same thing. I don't care how many. I had three boys. We got three sons. And you don't get, you, just because they are they all your sons. We try to be equal now. You know, we don't give, give one a piece of candy. You got to give everybody a piece of candy. Amen. But God tells us here, even though it may look to you like somebody got more than what you have, we all in God's eyes are equal. Ooh. He gave all of us everything that we need to succeed. Mm -hmm. See, we, we look at it. See, and this is why the reason why the Bible says it's unwise to compare yourselves among yourselves. Stop looking at what somebody else got and think you're supposed to have it. Because if you got it, then you don't know what comes with it. Did you get that? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I only got one. They got two. I should have two. So when you get those two, here comes some more responsibility. The Bible says much is given, much is required. And there's many of us today that have a, an abundance, but we don't give nothing. Woo! Pastor, I thought we were talking about where faith lives. Yeah, when you understand where faith lives, you'll understand how to give. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Come on. Oh, yeah, I'm talking to you now. When we understand where faith lives, see, see, we'll realize I don't need to look at what the other man has or what the other woman has in comparison to what God has given me because he has dealt every each and every one of us the measure. He's given each and every one of us the ability. Oh, my God. He's given every one of us the same opportunity. No, not me. I was born. I had to stay in a foster home. My parents left. I lost my mother. I lost my brother. No. You still got the same measure. You still got the same ability in God's eyes as far as everybody else. Mm, mm, don't seem right. Mm -hmm. No, it does not. See, faith don't seem right because you're trying to make faith logic. Yeah, you're trying to make faith make sense. And God, the faith will not make sense according to your logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be faith. It wouldn't be faith if he brought it down to your level. Mm, I don't understand that. How is that? He got more than me. How He was raised on the good side of the tracks. I was raised on the bad side of the track. Well, tell me this. How is it that the man that was raised on the bad side of the tracks ended up uh, excelling in life? And he had, and in your eyes, he had less opportunities than somebody that was on the other side of the tracks. He worked his faith. He used his ability that God gave him and worked his faith, just like we have to do. And when we learn how faith works, 
and we start to work our faith. Uh, I told him on Sunday, tell your faith to get up off the couch. It's time to go to work. Mm. <laughs> Glory to God. So here in Romans, the 12th chapter, the third verse, it says, for don't think too highly of yourself. So what God is telling us, even before he goes into telling us that there's many members in the body, he's telling us no matter whether you, whether you think you got more or you got less. He said, don't think too high of yourself and don't think too low of yourself. Why? He said, because I dealt every man and every woman the measure of faith. He said, I gave everybody the same ability to do what they need to do to succeed in life. Mm. And then he went on. I told you in 2 Peter 1, 3, he said, I've given you everything that pertains to what? Life and godliness. He said, I gave you everything you need in life. That's how we live down here on earth. How we make it through. Don't matter who in the White House, who in the Black House, who up, who down, who in, who out. He said, I gave you everything that pertains to life and and godliness. What is godliness? How to get to him. He said, I gave you everything you need to reach me. To keep in contact with me. How do I do it? Through faith. Woo! Glory. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, glory to God. My afro's coming back. How do I do it? I do it through faith. Through my faith in him. That's how I keep in touch with him. He said, I'm leaving, but I'm not going to leave you confidence. I'm not going to leave you lost. Mm. He said, I'm going to send the comforter. <laughs> Glory to God. But I got to have enough faith to stay connected to him. Now, because he gave me everything that pertains to life and to godliness, my God, I got everything I need in the natural and I got everything I need in the spiritual. See, Romans 12 and 3, he said, I dealt every man the measure of faith. But when you get over to 2 Peter 1, 3, he said, I'm just going to take the brakes off and I'm going to give you everything that you need to, that pertains to life and to godliness. Too many of us think it's our education that's going to get us to God. And God said, to get to me, you got to have a revelation. Mm, I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much book knowledge you have. The reason why I started this study off by asking you if you knew what last week's lesson was, because it's not, it's not what you read that's going to help you. It's only what you retain. Oh, good God Almighty. Oh, it's getting good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead. Praise him right there. How much you retain. How much of this word can you give back to God? See, when you start to go through, when things don't seem like they're working out, no matter who's in the White House, no matter who get promoted on your job, no matter who gets, who loses a job, who wins, who win, who in, who out, it does not matter. What's going to matter in the end is do I have faith in God? <laughs> Glory to God. Where is my faith? And where does faith live? Find my faith. <laughs> Good God Almighty, you trying to have some. We can't expect somebody to live by faith when they don't even live in faith. You got to live in faith. Believing that no matter if it's raining, if it's storming, if it's a tornado, it's the same God. <laughs> Glory to God. It's the same God. He's the same God that's over the Jew, the Greek, the Republican, the Democrat, the, the Pentecostal, the, 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 the uh, Baptist, the Baptist. He is the same God. And he said, on those that call upon me, he said, there is no distinction. There is no difference. All my children are the same. My God, my God. <laughs> he said, no, but you gave him more than me. No, he said, no. And the reason why he said, I do it the way I do it. He said, it's many members in the body, but not every member holds the same office. Do you see it? Right there in Romans, the 12th chapter, the fourth verse. He says, many members in the office, what is your assignment? <laughs> Glory to God. Some people want what the pastor got, but you don't want the assignment that I got. This anointing don't just come because I, I went in the kitchen and cooked up something. Hallelujah. You got to have the faith of God. And he said, there are many members in the body. Many members in the body, but not every member holds the same office. <laughs> he said, I dealt to your faith according to your ability. He said, and I'm the one that gave you the agility to do what you do. Mm. I thought it was my job. I thought it was mom and him. I thought it was this one. I thought it was that. God said, no, it's me. It's all about me. Woo. God said, I'm the one doing it. Good God of mine. Do you see it? I'm still here in Romans, the 12th chapter, the fourth verse. He says, member, many members in the body, but not all the members have the same function. So being many, verse five, and one body in Christ and individual members of one of, of one another having different 
gift, having gifts different, differing according to the grace given unto us. We got to stop wanting what we think somebody else got because it looked like it's better than what I had. My faith ain't in them. My faith is in God. <laughs> and my faith ain't in what I have. You know, Bishop taught us like this. He said, if your possessions have got you and you don't have them, then, then you are slave to them, not them to you. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. If your money got you, this is the reason why he said, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Your position, if you think your position, if, your, if you think so high of your position, then you don't have the position. The position has you. And when you live by faith, you realize that nothing that I have, do I have it of myself. Everything that I have is because of the one who gave it to me. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So where does faith live? Where does faith reside? How can I change location and move to where faith is? Mm. See, our first responsibility is to be taught uh, what, what, need, what we need to live in faith so that we can live by faith. <laughs> Glory to God. How can I live in faith how can I live by faith when I don't even live in faith? You know, I, th I think whoever win the presidency is going to be better for me. My life going to change. No, my faith is in God no matter who wins. <laughs> Glory to God. And when, because my faith is in God, I already win. Woo! Glory. Oh, this is good. So we got to live by, come on, come on, faith. We got to Live by faith. How do I live by faith? See, no matter what the person's faith is, the answer is the same. Did you see it right there? That's the reason why he said there is no difference. I had to read the scripture to you before I give it to you. Doesn't matter what our faith is, no matter what, uh, what our belief is, no matter whether we're Jew, no matter whether we're Greek, he said, I'm the same God over all and all. It does not matter to him. The answer is the same from a faith perspective. In order for faith to be considered living, in order for my faith to come alive, it requires two things. I got to have a relationship with God. Come on. And then I have to have an effort or be making an effort to live according to the tenets of my faith, mm, of what I believe. The Bible, there's a question in the Bible. He said, uh, have, you, have you received since you believed? Mm, have you received since you believed? See, many people believe, but they have not received because what they believe, they're not even trying to live according to what they say they believe. Mm. And see, I used to tell my sons that God is the type of God that will bless effort. <laughs> God is looking for somebody, somebody that's trying to do right. Somebody that, that's going in the right direction, that, that's following him. I, he said, yeah, you know, I, I may slip and fall, but I get back up and I continue going towards him. Paul said, I press toward the mark. Oh, my God. Why did he have to press? Because it get hard sometimes. <laughs> It gets rough sometimes. We have to go through the adversities of life. But if we stay in faith and keep our eyes on the prize, oh my God, and keep our mouth shut and our ears open, we can hear what? And hear by faith. That's how faith comes. That's how we hear. It. So first we got to have a relationship with God. So I told you first, you know, if you want, some people want to get with faith, but they want to get with faith out in the street. I'll see around the corner. Maybe I'll call faith. But the Bible says, so faith comes by hearing. And the reason why many of us can't say nothing is because we ain't heard nothing. Reason why we can't speak by faith and live in faith is because we have not heard by faith. And remember, we taught you here now, faith does three things. What's the three things that faith does? Anybody know? Just go ahead and type them, uh, other than Lady Whitley, amen? Tell me what the three things that faith does. I we've been teaching this now. It's three things that faith does. And I'll give you the first one, faith speaks. What's the other two things that faith does? Somebody go ahead and type them in real quick. This Bible study. And I want you to get some. See, because it's not what you read that's going to help you, but it's what you retain. 
The Bible said it's going to come a time when there's going to be a famine for even the word of God. So those of us that don't have this word down on the inside of us, if we don't have it inside of us, how are we going to be able to bring it back out of us? Those of us that don't have it down on the inside of us, how are we going to produce the fruit that the, that the word of God says we ought to produce? Uh, yeah, if a famine come, I can't find my word. I, I can't find this Bible. Something break out with one of my kids. My, my, my son gets sick. My daughter gets sick. My wife pass out. Can I, can I, can I bring up the prayer of faith? Ooh. Can it come back up out of me? Uh, while they laying on the floor, do I have to go find the word and, and, and go through it? Or do I have to Google what the prayer of faith is before I can pray for this individual that just passed out? Or is it down inside of me? Does faith live in me so it can come out of me? <laughs> Glory to God. That is, Sister Crow. Faith speaks. It does something and faith gives something. Oh, my God. Faith does all these three things without seeing the manifestation of whatever faith is looking for. See, faith can start to pray when somebody. Pray. Faith can pull the pin, drop the bomb, no matter what. Why? Because it's in me. Faith lives in me. Faith resides in me. My God, my God. So when I have a problem, instead of me dwelling on the problem, when I have an issue, instead of me dwelling on the issue, when I'm worried about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen with the election, instead of me dwelling on those things, faith comes out of me. <laughs> what do I start doing? I start saying what God says. Woo! What do I start doing? I start doing what faith says. What do I give? I start giving what faith says give. And that's my time, my talents, and my treasures. Mm. Go ahead, somebody type that in. What does faith give? Faith gives time, talent, and treasures. Many of you tonight are giving, are, giving, are giving all three of those. You're giving your time because you're here listening to the word of God. Many of you are giving your, your treasure because you, you've already made a donation. I see it on the screen. You've already given your time, your talent, and your treasure. And many of you are giving your talents by what you do in the ministry, by what you do to help others. Your talents, you're using what God gave you. Remember I gave you the story in Matthew 25. He called his servants unto him and he gave them each talent. And if you read that in its entirety, he said he gave it to them according to their several abilities. Whatever God's given you, he's given it to you to use it in the kingdom. No, not when you get to heaven. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. When we get to heaven, it's going to be sit down and rest time. <laughs> Glory to God. Faith gives time, talent, and treasure. You got it, Nadja. That's it. That's what faith does. And that's what many of you are doing right now. And sometimes it is so easy with God, we don't even realize that we're doing it. But that's what faith is. I'm doing it by faith. Why am I listening to the word tonight? Why do I need to hear what God is saying to me tonight? Because I want faith to reside. I want faith to abide where? In me. <laughs> I want faith to live in me. But I first, before faith can live in me, I first got to discover where faith is. I can't get faith in me. Until I find out where faith lives. I got to locate my faith. My God. Ah! Ooh, where is faith at? Our faith gets its life from our efforts. Remember we already taught you. Faith alone. Gave you the scripture. Faith alone is dead. That's in James. Faith alone is dead. Faith by itself is dead. The Bible told us that I got faith. You got dead faith if you ain't doing nothing. If you're not doing those things we just told your faith is dead. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Your faith is dead. Faith gets life. Faith become, becomes living. Faith comes alive. How does faith come alive, Pastor? It comes alive by me acting upon what I say I have. Mm. Oh, I can see your faith now. Jesus told, told them he saw their faith. My God, you mean, you mean faith is evident? Oh, oh my God. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. So how did Jesus see their faith? He saw their efforts. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's a story. <clears throat> it was a man, he was sick, paralyzed, if you will. He was laying on a bed and his friends was trying to get him to Jesus. They said, if we could get this brother to Jesus, then we know he could be healed. 
Well, when they got to the place where Jesus was, it was so packed they couldn't get in there. They couldn't get the man in there. They lifted the man up on a gurney to the top of the building, tore, opened the roof, and they lowered the man down. As they were lowering the man down, Jesus, the Bible said Jesus looked up and saw their faith. My God. He saw their faith. How did he see it? What did he see? He saw their efforts. Ooh. And as they lowered the man down, Jesus said, sir, your sins have been, have been forgiven and you healed. <laughs> ah! Now, when he said, the Bible said he saw their faith, he saw his friend's faith. Because it was his friends that had the effort to try to get him to the master so that he could be healed. When was the last time that heaven saw your faith? Mm. When was the last time heaven saw your faith? It's easy to lay around and say, I'm waiting on God. But when are you going to get up? Tell your faith to get off the couch. Get up. It's time to go to work. Good God Almighty. <laughs> oh, faith. Faith comes alive by our efforts. And when faith comes alive, the power of God, oh my God, it's a chemical reaction. When our faith comes alive and the power of God comes upon it. Paul made this declaration <clears throat> in Romans 1 and 16. Paul makes this declaration boldly. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone that believes. You see it? It's in your Bible. Romans 1 16. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yeah, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of my faith. Ugh. Oh, your faith comes alive when you're not ashamed of it. Your faith comes alive when you start to speak by faith, when you start to do by faith, when you start to give by faith. Others will see it. Doesn't mean that, that you're going to be popular with people. If that's the case there, then that's not faith. You're trying to get something from man. But your faith, when you're not ashamed of it, as Paul describes here, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You see it? Romans 1, 16. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. <laughs> Good God of mine. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who what? Believe. Mm, mm. When you're not ashamed like Paul and you understand that everything I am, everything that I have and everything that I will ever be comes from who he is to me. Mm. I believe now I can receive. Our faith comes alive when we act upon it. It's the power that comes from God. See, it ain't no power in what we do. The power comes from God. So where does faith reside? Somebody want to know. Who, who want to know, where does faith reside? Because, Pastor, I want this faith. I, I want to live there so I can give there. How do I get to where faith is? Where does faith reside? Don't you know faith has built her house? <laughs> Good God Almighty. <laughs> faith has built her house. My God, well, I, know, I know what you said, Pastor. I know you. Where is it? Where she live? What's the neighborhood? What's the address? Faith has built her house on the word of the living God. Mmm. Mm, mm. The just shall live by faith. Jesus told the devil, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. Oh, my God. Oh, glory to God. And this is where faith has built her house. Oh, this is where faith has taken up residence. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Faith has built a house. She, she lives on the word of God. So if I'm going to live by faith, oh my God, if I'm going to walk in faith, my God, where I got to get to? <laughs> Glory to God. Where do I have to live at? Where should I reside at? How can I get faith in me? Woo! Oh, Glory to God. I want this faith, this faith that you're talking about. But I want this faith, the faith to believe. And I want you to understand the father of faith, the, Bi the Bible says, is Abraham. Woo! The f Why is he the father of faith? He's our natural father of faith. Remember, I told you he gives us all things pertaining to life and godliness. He's our natural father. But our father, which is in heaven, oh my God, is the author and the finisher of our faith. Woo! Oh, that's it. I know where faith lives now. I know where faith's address is. 
I know where faith is. See, our father, not Abraham. <laughs> yeah, in the natural. Come on now. He's the father of faith. Oh, my God. But God, whoo, our father in heaven, he's the author. My God, my God. He's the creator, the OG, the originator of our faith. The author and finisher, my God. Woo! The beginning and the end. The Alpha and Omega, if you will. Woo! My God, my God. Oh, I'm getting happy now. Why? Because I know where faith is. I know where faith lives. And I know for faith to reside in me, I got to abide in the word of God. Oh, my God. You getting it? Are you getting it? So that why? Why do I need to live in faith? Why do I need to live by faith? If you was with us last week and we talked about the fruit of faith so that you can produce what faith says you should have. Yeah. Oh, my God. Come on. Come on. When I live there, when I live there, then I'm, I'm producing what faith says I should have. Oh, my God. There's some people right now that need peace. Oh, glory to God. That need peace. But peace is, in, is that fruit that I need to have. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, well, I need patience. I told you on Sunday, the Bible said, add to your faith. Ooh, my God. Open your faith bag up and add to your faith. What am I adding to? I got to add some patience. <laughs> ah, glory to God. I got to add, add some virtue to my faith. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. The disciples asked Jesus. They said, increase our faith. Jesus said, no, if you just got faith the size of a mustard seed. See, in, in our eyes, he had to give this he had to give this demonstration because we, we, we judge things off of big, small. Oh, if he got a big house, then he better than me. Oh, if he got a small house. No, he said, no, all you need is this much, the size of a mustard seed. He said, that's all you need. And, he, and then the Bible tells us, now, if you got that and you work that faith, then when you open your faith bag and you start adding patience, you start adding virtue, oh, my God, you start adding these things to fruit, guess where that happens? That happens inside of you. So that faith is residing now in me. So when I run into the adversities of life, when I run into the problems, the issues, and situations of life, guess what comes out of me? Oh, my God. Faith. <laughs> What's that? Faith. <laughs> Glory to God. You don't sound like everybody else. I don't care who's in the White House. I don't care who's in the Black House. I don't care who's in the outhouse. God is on the throne. Oh, my God. My faith. My faith is in him. My God, not worried about election. <laughs> Glory to God. That's a mad thing. Where is your faith? Where faith lives? Where does faith live? You should know now. Next week, I'm going to ask you, do you know where faith lives? Somebody ought to be able to. See, it's not what you read. It's not, it's not what you hear. You heard it, but did you hear it by faith? It says faith comes. Now you can't call faith. Keep your mouth closed. Open your ears and your heart. And faith comes by hearing. My God, I need to hear. That's for me, Pastor. I need to hear. I thought I was living by faith. I thought I was walking by faith. No, I've been walking according to my own way, to my own knowledge. The Bible said, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. Mm. When you can't see straight, acknowledge him. <laughs> My God. When I don't know which way to go, acknowledge him. Mm. When I don't know what to do, acknowledge him. And then the Bible says, and he shall direct your path. Woo! My God. <laughs> How I'm going to make it out? How I'm going to get through this? How to work? As the world turns, God is still in control. Woo! Glory to God. Do you see it there? That's how we live by faith, when we live in faith. So where does faith live? Faith has built her house on the word of God. This is where faith lives at. This is where faith has built her house at. I want to go back to Romans, the 12th chapter there. I read verses 4 and 5 to you so that you would understand there's many members in the body. And don't get, don't get caught up on somebody else's position in the body or what somebody else is doing because that, that, that's what God gave them to do. That's what God gave them to do. But what did he give you to do? Too many times we caught up in somebody else's assignment and therefore our assignment gets neglected. Mm. How do I know what my assignment is? Well, if I know where faith lives and I'm living in faith and I'm living by faith, then faith comes out of me. Then I do what the talents that God gave me to do. I don't need, if I, God didn't give me the talent to sing. Woo, glory to God. No, no, I can... I'll, by faith, I can't jump up there and grab the mic. <laughs> 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 
But if he gave you that ability, then you walk in it. You live in it. You work in it. You do that. That's what faith does. Faith gives what he gave. Oh, come on, somebody. Faith gives what he gave. What you should be giving. God said, why are you complaining? I had to get this revelation. This is part of my testimony. We're about to close. This is part of my testimony. I had to get the revelation. I had a problem with giving. Until God gave me the revelation and told me, he said, son, why are you complaining about giving? It ain't yours. Ooh. He said, you can give by faith because if your faith is in me, the supplier, uh -huh, remember the Bible said, he shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. So when it comes to giving, I shouldn't have a problem because my supplier... Mm, because my supplier is giving me everything I need. So when I give, it doesn't matter if I'm depleted, long as the supply house, ooh, glory to God. <laughs> I feel my afro coming back. Long as the supply house don't run out. And he says, according to his riches. So my faith, when faith lives in me, when I reside in faith, when I abide in faith, I don't have to worry about giving. I don't have to worry about running out because everything I got comes from him. Mm, oh, this is good. This is good. So I know where faith is. I know where faith lives. And when I know where faith lives and where faith has built her house, then I can move in that same neighborhood and I can attain the same thing that faith says I shall have. Oh, my God. What's coming out of you today? Is faith coming out of you? Ooh, are you giving? Are you giving from your storehouse or are you giving from God's storehouse? See, when you give out of abundance, meaning you know where he said, I come that you might have life. Oh, and not only life, but the abundant life. Oh, my God. Why did he want us to have the abundant life? So when it comes to giving of ourselves, of our time, of our talents, of our treasures, he said, you won't get depleted because you're giving from the store. Oh, glory to God. This is good. You see, when you understand where faith lives and faith starts to abide and reside within you, you understand everything I am, everything that I have, and everything I ever want to be is in him. Hmm. Ain't this good? Ain't this good? So I'm not worried. I thank God. I thank God for the election. I thank God for our ability to be able to, to, to vote and, and to be able to have rights. We know that some things, so it's going to be some things on this earth as long as we're here that's not going to be right. We just, we got to accept it. That's the reason why we stay before him. That's the reason why our faith is in him and not in what we see and not in what, what's going on around us. Our faith is not in what they said. Our faith is in what he said. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we have to KYMS and hear what he says. That's where my faith is. Yeah, I know what they said. I, you know, no matter who wins the election, I'm going to pray for each and every one of you that your faith remains strong, that your faith remains. Remember I told you about them trees on Sunday, that you be, remain rooted and grounded. Don't be like one of them trees that roots grow out instead of down. No, you, your faith has to be rooted and grounded in him. So no matter what storms come, no matter what winds blow, your faith is in him. No matter who wins the election, my faith is not in the president. It doesn't matter who wins. The, uh, Trump can win, you're going to have a problem with that. When Biden wins, you'll have a problem with that. You can, we always going to have issues, problems, and situations. Why? Because we're in this world. But when our faith is in him, we can live the abundant life. <laughs> Thank God Almighty. How are you living it? We're in a pandemic right now. We're in a pandemic right now, and we're watching the manifestation of God even in a pandemic. Why? Because I, we're not worried about what's going on around us. Yeah, we wear our masks. Yeah, we follow the safety precautions and procedures. Yeah, we do all those things. But our faith ain't in that. Our faith is in him, that he's able to keep us. Woo! That he's able to protect us. My God, my God. The Bible said, except the Lord build the house, those that labor do it in vain. If God don't keep us, I don't care how long you stay up at night. I don't care how many guns you got. I don't care what kind of alarm system you got on your house. The Bible said if God don't keep the city, woo, the watchmen watch in vain. <laughs> Glory to God. Why can we say that? We can say that by faith. <laughs> Good God Almighty. We're saying it by faith. 
Stay up all night. You can worry yourself to death. But if God don't keep the city, if God don't protect, my God, I don't care how much money you got in the bank. We found out a couple years ago, you can lose everything in a matter of minutes. And they won't give you nothing back. Woo! My God. The stock market fell. People started losing money. Jobs started losing. Why? Because their faith was in that and not in him. My God. Man, if you, if you lose everything and you still got God, you can come back. <laughs> Glory to God. But if you lose everything and you never had God, whoo, you in a bad place. You in a bad place. Glory to God. You got to find out where faith lives. And where faith lives, that's where you want to live. Where faith resides, that's where you want to abide. Where faith is, that's where you want to be. So when you go through in the good times and the bad times, faith can come out of you. Mm. He said, like a well of water in you. Glory to God. How many of you got something tonight? I pray God was with you tonight. I pray that your ears were open, that you were able to hear and hear again. We thank all of you for joining us. We, we pray tonight that you get peace and sweet rest. We pray that there's no anxiety. When you wake up tomorrow, they'll still be talking about the election. Don't you stay up tonight worried about it. You get some rest tonight. Matter of fact, before you go to bed tonight, go back over the notes. Listen to the tape again. Where faith resides, where faith lives, so that you can build your house where faith has built her house. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you won't be anxious and have anxiety. So you're not worried. So you still got to get up tomorrow and go to work. You still got to get up tomorrow and do whatever God has called you to do. You still got to get up and live in the talents God has given you. No matter who's in the White House, no matter who's in the outhouse, you still got to do what God has given you to do. You still got to do it. And you know what you got to do it? By faith. <laughs> Glory to God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for all of those that are listening to me even now, Father God. Father, we thank you for your word tonight, Father God. We thank you that we know where faith lives and we reside and abide where faith is. Father, I pray now that faith will reside in your people, Father God, that whatever tragedies or, or calamities or whatever trials or situations that they may go through that faith will spring out to. Father, we love you and we praise you. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Tell somebody that God is able by faith. Y'all have a good night. God bless you.